Hey everybody, welcome back. Uh, I hope that you had a good weekend. Uh, this week what we're going to do is we're going to look at several sprinkler challenges um, for sprinkler heads being installed in walk-in coolers and freezers. Hope you enjoy this week and uh, again please uh, pose your questions or topics to me uh, when they come to you. Take care. What are some challenges that you experience with sprinkler heads installed in walk-in coolers and freezers? It's a good question. What I'm going to do in this brief presentation is talk to you about some challenges that I've experienced uh, in the most recent past. One of the most common and potentially dangerous issues with fire protection in walk-in coolers and freezers is the potential for ice plugs to delay or impair sprinkler discharge, as seen here on the right. I'm sure many of you have seen this condition in some coolers and freezers. Why do these ice plugs form? Any gap or compromise between the sprinkler or pipe and the insulative cooler freezer lid can allow moist warm air to enter the cooler freezer near the compromise. Once this intrusion occurs, the moist air reaches the chilled freezer temperature. The moisture condensates into water and then freezes, forming an ice block. Preventing ice blocks is all about quality and lasting seals between the dry sprinkler shaft and the adjacent insulation. In theory, if any clearance around the dry sprinkler is sufficiently insulated, such as with spray foam, and this foam stays in place for years without movement, then ice blocks couldn't occur. However, such is the case in many large retailers or groceries, the tops of the coolers and freezers are subject to some movement from personnel or storage on top of the units themselves. Even with very minor deflection, fixed sprinklers and pipe can shift away from the insulation, causing a gap in the insulation and forming ice blocks. So how do we ensure that ice blocks do not form? Some manufacturers, such as Tyco, offer rubber boots that adhere to the top of the cooler freezer and tighten to the dry pennant sprinkler, which helps accommodate movement of the lid over time and ensures a better seal against the sprinkler shaft. While a little pricier than a foam insulation can, these can be quick to install and can offer a better seal against the cooler freezer. The last challenge that I want to discuss in relation to sprinklers and walk-in coolers and freezers is the refrigeration equipment as obstructions. Very often the refrigeration equipment is a part of the cooler freezer supplier's equipment package, but it's not indicated on the mechanical HVAC plans or the sprinkler shop drawings. As you can see here on the right is an example of a sprinkler shop drawing that does not show this required refrigeration equipment. Without good information on the dimensions of the equipment, it's often difficult for sprinkler layouts to incorporate the equipment without being obstructed under NFPA 13. That's why it's important for us as plans reviewers to anticipate these locations with sprinklers in the front and rear of the unit to help mitigate this late forming issue. That's what I do, and I hope it's a good option for you as well. So what do you think? Do you think that using the boot in lieu of spray foam to fill the gap in the thermal barrier is the best option? I think it is, and it's the best option that I've seen that the code allows in Annex A, 8.4.9.3 of NFPA 13. Also, uh, when we don't know the anticipated refrigeration locations, it's best to call for sprinklers in front and back until they can give that to us. Thank you for being with me this week, and I look forward to uh, coming back with another interesting topic next week. Take care, and have a great holiday season.